be making basics. What's going on YouTube? Be making basics back again with another dope video. If you're new to my channel, please go ahead and subscribe as well as give me a thumbs up if you like today's content. So what we're going to be doing today is a mixing video. I'm going to be showing you how to mix a soulful trap beat in logic pro 10. now i have this beat i'm gonna give you a different just a basic little preview especially if you're new this would be good like catch up on what we've been working on over the last couple of videos and then from there i'm gonna be going ahead and giving you all the secrets some basic um you know best practices to follow when it comes to mixing your music or specifically your beats so let's go ahead and listen to this beat i'm gonna listen to we'll give you all just a little taste of it and then we'll jump right in So that's the beat, man. So, so first couple things here, um, you know, there's a easy way to do this, and then there's a more difficult way. But the bit more difficult way is more of a best practice way. All right. So the, the the easy way to do this is you probably might see some people doing this, and I might have done this before in the past. But you go ahead and mix these MIDI files, all right, and then export it as uh, a audio, you know, for the mix for the. Uh, for the uh, stems and then bounce it down as well as an mp3 in a wave that's going to be decent you know you can get a lot of good results that way but what you're going to run in if you don't and for this beat you're not going to be able to see um a good example of this but a lot of times on beats you know producers will put hella plugins on certain instruments just to beef it up and make it sound real nice okay um, that's not going to be good for mixing because it's going to take up a whole lot of uh, processing power on your computer. It's going to lag and it's going to make the mix sound a little bit messed up. So what you want to do instead is go ahead and gain stage these tracks, basically making sure that they're not going to be peaking. And then from there, you're going to go ahead and export it as audio. When you export it as audio, what's going to happen is all of the digital data that's within each track, whether it be a, I added a plugin or whatever, that is going to be you know printed on that audio file and so it's not going to be so much uh you know pressure on your computer to process that and everything like that it's going to come out with a smoother mix now i will say this um a lot of mixing is what you do in the pre you know pre-production phase of things and what i mean by that is you know your sound selection is really going to help when it comes to getting a good mix if you like use a whack kick drum you know, when it comes to mixing, there's, you're going to have to add a whole bunch of stuff to it, which is ultimately going to help, you know, cause more problems for you. Instead, make sure that the kick, the 808, the clap, the snare and the different instrument sounds um, are the most high quality that you can, you know, find and make sure that they work well within the beat. And that's going to help your mix to sound a whole lot, you know, real professional. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn off this read. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because I have like a fade on here automation wise. And I just put that there just to give me a feel of how this is going to go. But when I turn that uh, read option off, it should just let this play without the automation. Let's see. All right. So that's all set up. And when we're exporting these files as, um, as, as audio, Again, we want to make sure that we're gain staging these, at least in um, Logic Pro 10. So how we're going to do that is um, I'm going to go ahead and just take all these plugins off of here. And I'm actually going to save this as uh, the name of the beat. And I'm going to say B. And excuse me, what that's going to do is just basically give me a, a double copy of this. So any changes I've made to this that I don't like, I can always go to the original that we just saved. My bad here. Um, next thing I'm going to do here is listen to each individual track and we're going to pay attention to the stereo out, make sure it's not peaking and make sure we actually have some headroom still when we're mixing. 
Um, usually I'll just throw this gain plugin on here and we can turn the gain up or down based on how loud the track is, you know, and that's called the process called gain staging. So let's just listen to this uh, sample. We'll go right down the mix, uh, right down the, right down the, you know, the ladder here, whatever you call this, uh, however you want to do this. All right, let's check it out. So that's solid. I'm just going to go ahead and put this on all of the other tracks like that. These all have the same type of sample. You know, one is reverse, one is high pitch. So let's listen to the high pitch. That's perfect. So now that pretty much set it up to where I didn't have to go ahead and regain stage this. Um, and then we're going to come over here to this bad boy right here. All right. So. This catch checking the levels to make sure it's not like distorting and not, you know, coming in too hot. Um, and it still have headroom here. So let's just listen to the uh, vocal or Vox track. And it's already a little bit too loud. It's fine, but if we want to give some headroom, then that's going to be the better thing to do is go ahead and turn that down as such. So that's enough on that. Let's look at this kick. As you can see there, it's punching super crazy, which I like it that it's punching crazy, but when it comes to mixing this beat, it's gonna punch in a little too hot. So what I'll do is we'll turn that down some. Yeah, cause I don't wanna turn it down so much to where it's just soft. We wanna still have that punch to it. Let's go to the 808. Again, way too loud. It's actually peaking. So that makes that a little better. So same thing with the clap. Clap is not as bad, but I'm still going to turn it down some. All right, so we got the clap and then last the snare and then the hi-hat. Peaking, so we'll turn that down some. All right, and then last is hi hat. All right, bet. So once I have that set up, now we can go ahead and take these files, and we'll this this will be our stems that we would you know put on B stars, air bits, stuff like that. And so all I'm going to do for this, of course, we're going to make sure that we don't have any like EQs on here or crazy plugins unless we really need them. But um, for the most part, no panning or anything as well. I'm going to go ahead and we'll export it like this. I'm come to my new beats. And this beat is called Not Afraid. And I'm just gonna go ahead and create the initial folder and then I'm gonna create a folder within this folder called Not Afraid Stems. Okay, for up here, I'm gonna go ahead and go with a WAV file, 24 bit. We're gonna turn overload protection off. And I usually like to go ahead and put the name of the beat right here in the custom. And then um, you want to make sure your pattern has custom first and then track name. And then from there, you can just go ahead and just push export. It's going to export everything in your session and, you know, give you your individual track stems. All right. So we'll be mixing the same track stems that you would give out um, when you sell your beat or whatever. So we're going to come over here now and just go ahead and do a new session. We'll close this. And yeah, we can save this. And I'm just gonna click an audio track right there. Once this is open, if you click all the way to your right, you see this events box right here. And I'm just gonna come over here on all files and we're gonna go to our desktop where we have everything and new beats. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on Not Afraid, Not Afraid Stems. And we're gonna drag these bad boys in here. 
Now, while these are love loading shameless plug here, I do want to let you know that if you are a beginner to music production, or maybe you just have like a little bit of chops, but you need someone to help you polish your sound, help you with some of the little inti intimate nuances to make sure that your beats sound professional, you might want to go ahead and go to my site, Beatmaking Basics, okay? Beatmakingbasics.com has courses that you can get to help you as a beginner go to the next level and make your sound sound more professional, okay? We have a beginner level course for someone who's very, very, very much so a beginner. And then we have people who are maybe just, they've been working on beats and everything like that, but they just need some help learning how to make beats in Logic Pro 10. Where is this at? How do you do that? How do you mix? How do you master? How do you do Yeah, all that's in those courses. Also, we have loop packs, we have drum kits, and I have a special service that I just now started doing. It's called our one-on-one -on -one beat lessons, okay? Uh, beat making lessons, okay? So if you want like one-on-one -on -one beat making lessons, say the YouTube videos are good, but they're not really giving you everything you need, definitely go ahead and check out my one-on-one -on -one beat lessons. Just do one, just to see how you like it. I'm guarantee you, you're going to be coming back for more because I really go deep and dive and I don't hold back anything. I give you all of my experience, all of my uh, expertise on music production just to help you get to the next level. But anyway, let's go ahead and um, import our tracks back into Logic. So we're going to say use existing tracks, push OK, and those are going to come right on in here. Now, I don't really remember what the BPM was. That's something that we definitely want to make sure that we're doing. So I'm going to open this. I'm going to say don't close real quick. And the BPM is 140. Bet. So I'm going to close that up. And you want to make sure that you go ahead and set that first before you even start mixing. Next stage, uh, you're going to go ahead and just put a basic loop over you know, the hook or at least the main part of the hook. All right. And the reason why you want to do that is because for the most part, most of your tracks are going to be right here within that hook. And then I'm just going to go ahead and uh, organize things. So I'm going to put my drums at the top or you can put them at the bottom. It doesn't matter. Either the drums at the top and the melody at bottom or the melody at top and the melody in the drums at bottom. Either way, you get the point. Um, so we're going to move the snare up here and we're good to go. Um, another thing I want to point out here that sometimes the best beats actually don't have the most tracks in them. So like if you're mixing your beat and you have more than like 10 or 12 tracks, you're doing way too much. So you want to look into minimalizing what you put in your beats and that's going to actually also help your mixes to be a whole lot easier or your beats easier to mix. So that's a huge golden tip there. Let's go ahead and now start working on getting the proper levels. I'm going to go over here to the mixer window and then I'm just going to go ahead and highlight everything and just bring everything down. And I'm going to start with the uh, drums first because you really want those drums to bang and sound the best before you start bringing in everything else. So we're going to start one by one. We'll start with this kick and we'll put it up like that. And you want us to just mix everything to where it still has some headroom. So Anywhere between this negative 6 dB and negative 3 dB, you know, it's going to be a good place to make sure your mix is hitting right at that. All right. So we're bringing the snare in next. And so as you notice here, I wanted the uh, kick to really be punching through the loudest in this mix. So even checking this down even that much more. So we'll bring up this uh, hi hats next. And then we'll bring up this 808. And last but not least, we'll go ahead and bring up these samples.
right, so that's pretty decent. Let's just go ahead and actually take this and put it over the uh, third sample right here. So this third sample pretty much is gonna be like a bridge part. And I just wanna make sure that that's hitting where it needs to. So this sounds solid. Um, so, so pretty much at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and save everything before I lose any, you know, progress here. We'll name it the name of the beat, and then I'm just gonna say mix. And what I'm gonna do is from here, I can actually go do something like this, where I will actually take all of the uh, drums. And I'll put them in its own separate like aux track. So we're gonna bus all these signals to an uh, auxiliary track. And why I want to do that is because I can control the whole mix of the drums with this one fader instead of having to like move up everything one by one. Or I can also put like plugins on that would affect the hall, the drums, vice versa. Like I could do this with the melody as well. So. And so like, this is kind of a trick, at least that I use, and I'm pretty sure a lot of other, uh, a lot of other engineers and producers use to like control the levels better. And so like, for instance, um, I want to keep some headroom going for this, you know, for, for the mastering process. So what I could do easily is just turn these down just a little bit. And so I still have the overall mix of the levels and everything, but I can still create a little bit more headroom. So let's listen to that. So this guarantees that I'm gonna have that headroom there. Um, from here, the next thing I wanna do is really start working on some EQing, okay? And what I wanna do more so than anything is subtractive EQing. And so what I'll do is we could actually start on the drums. I'm not gonna EQ the 808 or the kick too much. I'll probably be cutting out maybe a little bit of the highs, but for the most part, I'll cut out some of the lows on the snare, the clap, and the hi-hat. So I'll start with the uh, snare. I'm going to use this EQ that's in a Waves Go bundle. Um, it's the REQ2. Okay. And two for two bands. So basically, I'm only going to be affecting either uh, the low end or the high end. I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of extra stuff on the EQ. So let's just do that here. I have like a, a you know, a little bit right here. We can just take that. You want to take out some of the lows, but don't take it out to the point where this is the, the sound starts sounding thin. So that's what we're, we're looking to do here. I'm going to go ahead and go now with the clap. And I can actually just take this in this hold down option and drag it over like so. Let it load. For some reason with these new M1 chips, it does have a little bit of a slower load time. And I think that might be fixed like with a newer update of the software or something. I don't know. We're going to go to talk with Apple about this and see what's up. But anyway, let's keep it going. This is for the clap. All right. We'll listen to it together with the, with the snare. And this is going to clean up the mix a little bit, making sure we're able to hear that 808 and kick punch to the mix a whole lot better. And we'll do this one. This is our hi hat. All right, so that's decent enough. All right, now let's go ahead and start working on the uh, samples here. Let's throw that one on this first one. This is where the magic is really going to happen on these samples.
that. So that pretty much is going to do it. We're actually going to go ahead and also listen to this little part right here. And so what I'm going to also do is just on the uh, melody auxiliary track here, I'm actually going to go ahead and add a plug in here. You can call me right or wrong on this, but I'm going to put this MV2 plug in and I'm just going to boost up some of the highs on this on the uh, this compressor. Just a little lows here as well. So from there, I'm also going to come over here and just do a little bit of panning. So I might just toy around with putting a hat either left or right. And then we can also toy around with uh, moving some of these sample sounds to the left or right. Maybe something like that. Maybe decide whether this vox will be like over to the left all the way or to the right. Only other real thing I would want to do on here is maybe go ahead and add a little bit of reverb. Uh, instead of adding the reverb directly on uh, within the audio effects, I'm going to put it on using the sends. So I'm going to send the signal from this aux track over here to affect the uh, reverb on whatever tracks I need. And I want to just want to put that reverb on this vox track or this vocal. And we'll go with this Valhalla room. Turn this decay up a little bit high and depth up a little bit. This down, pre delay. And we're just going to turn this up some. All right, now what I'm gonna do is listen to this on some different speakers. I have uh, a pair of headphones, I'm gonna listen to there first. You'll probably hear the same thing, but I'll hear something a little different. Um, so we'll listen there. And that's a whole lot of reverb on that, so I'll turn it down some. And one thing I also could do, since I'm using headphones, we can use another plug-in here. 
And this plug is just going to help with um, just kind of like getting an AB on the mix here. So there's a plugin called, uh, let me see where that joint is, NX Ocean Way, Nashville. It's supposed to replicate being in a big boy studio in Nashville. So we can listen to it with the plugin on. Make sure you turn the plugin off after you finish like getting, you know, the levels. Okay, cool. And then we also have another plugin you can use. It's by Rocket Power Sound. It's a car test plugin. You can throw this on here and it's supposed to emulate being in a car. So I'm just making sure that this is hitting solid. Make sure those drums are knocking pretty good at any level that they are. And um, looks like just honestly, maybe this needs to be brought down some like these, the, the melody. Let's check it out.
All right, so we'll listen to it now without this Ocean Way plug-in on here. And I'm gonna take the headphones out and just play this again in the speakers. But I'm gonna play it low in the mix. So I feel like this is pretty solid of a mix. Um, I'm pretty sure, you know, others might say I could do other things to this mix to make it even better. You know, if you do feel like I can make the mix better, definitely say something in the, in the uh, comments. But make sure if you do say something in the comments, it's actual legit advice rather than not then, oh, I don't like the mix or da 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 da. Say, hey, you know, why don't you have, if, if you had put a little bit of this on there and did this, it might have sound better. That type of thing. So I'm always open to suggestions, but I feel like this is a, this is a solid mix. Now, the next thing I'm going to do here is save this and just go ahead and bounce this down. And what I'm going to do is just bounce it down as a wave file right here. And I'm going to do 4,800 or 1,000, excuse me. And we'll bounce this down. I'm gonna put it in the same folder as this one with the stems. And then this is just my process. I put record on here, so this is the track that people record to. Has the headroom there, but it's mixed, so basically everything's balanced. Um, you know, the EQs have been put on there to you know affect you know the different signals and stuff like that to make sure everything's sounding clean. And um, from here, we're gonna just going to take this track and then drag it into um, a mastering session. All right. Now, I don't know how to master. Like, I don't I can't sit there and say, all right, you're going to put this plug in on and this plug in on this plug in on. I do know the basics just to bring up the levels, you know, pretty good. So that's what we'll do. And uh, yeah, let me go ahead. And this is saved. We'll do a new file. And this part is actually pretty simple creating um, uh, an audio track. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in our file this way. And new beat. Bring them in like that. All right, so like once it gets in here, um, for the most part, what we're gonna do is this, make sure the end mark is at the very end. And then we're gonna go over here to our plugins on the stereo out, and we're gonna put Ozone 9 on there. Um, I like to keep it very simple. You know, I don't claim to necessarily be a mastering engineer, although I am going to start working on learning that process more. But basically what you want to do is go to the um, mastering assistant here and I just do that and just play. Pretty much as you can see here, it does most of the heavy lifting when it comes to mastering your beats. Now, sometimes I do come over here to the EQ, all right, and I might turn that off because sometimes you see, as you can see here, it kind of can affect my beat. So I'll just turn that off here and just use the maximizer and that dynamic EQ that uh, the master assistant put in place. So now let's go ahead and check it out here um, how it's going to sound. Yeah, 
that. So it sounds pretty solid. So at this point, pretty much what I would do is just go ahead and export this beat or bounce this down, excuse me, and uh, go from there, man. But um, like I said, just turning off this EQ right here makes a difference. But y'all, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you want more information on mixing, um, if you want more information on how to make beats in Logic Pro 10, just go to my site, beatmakingbasics.com, okay? Check this out. We got courses on you there that you can download. We got loop packs that are royally free that you can use in your beats. And we also have our one-on-one -on -one beat making lesson service, okay? So I can give you lessons on how to make beats in the program. Appreciate y'all watching.